Hi, everyone. This is the fourth season of the Interfaith Film and Music Festival, and we have the team from Faith Walk, uh, who is an official selection for uh, this year. And we'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves, the film, and um, just give us a little background as to how the film came about. Hi, thank you so much. And first of all, we are so honored to be an official selection and so grateful that this film festival has been created to allow people to talk about faith and to be able to connect with people who are seeking in all different walks of life. My name is Kristen, and this is my husband, Peter. We are working on our 13th year of marriage. And in 2019, between 2018 and 19, everything in our world was struggling. Our relationship was struggling. My work life was really unbalanced. And I got to a really bad spot mentally, depression, and just, we got pregnant, had a miscarriage, lost a family member, like everything in our world was just a mess. And so we realized that we needed to pivot and we needed to take time for ourselves to choose each other, choose our relationship, choose our faith and do something drastic with our lives. A lot of things showed us that Walking the Camino de Santiago would be a, a great place for us to transition. It's a 500 mile walk across Spain. It's been done for more than a thousand years. And traditionally it's known for transformation. So that was the first part of our pilgrimage. And that's what our film is about. It's called Camino de Santiago Faith Walk with Kristen and Peter. Yeah. I'm the husband, the assistant, the pack mule. I fly the drone. So um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we we set out. We used to volunteer with some uh, organizations for individuals with physical challenges. So when we went and we knew we were going to walk this, we decided that we wanted to share it and we were just going to do our best and try to piece things together. Mm -hmm. And whatever we had at the end, that was going to be our gift for those who couldn't physically walk it. So. Yeah. This is what that's all about. So we cashed in half of a 401k to pay for it. And we carried all the camera gear on the backpacks that are just behind us. So each pack weighed, mine was around 30 pounds. Peter's was more than like maybe 45. It wasn't good for our bodies whatsoever. And so we shot everything that happened and we finished. And then we were, we came back from our pilgrimage after Spain. We went to Israel Then we spent six weeks in India Several months goes by and then quarantine begins and we were forced to just sit in our apartment like so many of you. And that's when the edit took place. So at first we just edited the lessons of every day that happened on our pilgrimage. We had three, you know, we had 300 minutes of edited content, of edited storytelling format content. And then we realized that if we cut us complaining about our pack weight and rain, that so many significant things happened that we realized that if we focus on the most important transformational moments for us spiritually, physically with our relationship, mm -hmm. then we had a documentary and that's what came together. Incredible. Can you all share or give tips of what it's like to be a husband wife production team? What do you think? Kristen's been in this, she's a trained journalist. That's what she went to school for. Uh, so she's used to putting short format videos and stories together. And I just started coming along, carrying a tripod. Then I was allowed to turn stuff on. And, you know, it's just I'm, I'm always learning. So um, and then he got his drone certification years ago because I knew that my my brain would not be able to pass the FAA test that he would have to take. And now it's it's really nice. It's also humbling because I know whenever he gives me advice or if I work on a project in the edit and he says, oh, that doesn't feel right. Or what about this? And I'm like, I don't want to work on it anymore. I'm done. But it's so nice for me to kind of be in the weeds of things and then to show things to him specifically in the edit and say, hey, what do you think about this? How does it feel? What are the sounds? So it's been really great being able to have a partner who I also get to live with and hang out with and be friends with all the time. And, and so many of these gifts, like these little lessons came out in the edit because we, yeah. we just tried to capture what we could do day to day, but we couldn't edit along the way. Kristen tried and it's, it wasn't possible. So yeah. we got to relive this and, and these experiences and lessons through the edits, which was 
really a gift to us. Yeah. One of the biggest challenging things was sharing our personal lives. I had spent, you know, 15 years telling other people's stories as a journalist, but I had never turned the camera on myself to share my own dirt. And so whenever we were in the writing and editing process, we relived the emotions of the struggles that came up on the Camino, which was marital issues. Um, For me, it was not using my voice to speak up for myself when it came to a struggle with a family member. So um, it was it was really challenging, but really helpful in the long run to to be able to revisit the lessons and the things that that this film and this journey really blessed us with, I think. Um, that's amazing to hear. What we learned um, in the industry is that sometimes people will turn their nose up against a faith-based movie saying it's low budget, it's low quality. And um, there have been filmmakers that have tried to raise the bar in terms of the faith-based documentary feature film. Can you all tell um, the audience a little bit about your experience of wanting to push back against that myth? Yeah, and honestly, we this is our first film. And so I don't even think we realized what was stacked up against us when we started. We just knew that we had to do it. And what I found from hearing from people is it is so much more powerful to talk about the things that some people might not be comfortable talking about. And that's faith or religion. In this film, we talk I think more in general, just about faith and God, because that's how we see it as God being in all beings and in all moments and in all um, items of the world. But what's so great was hearing from people, specifically people who would come up to us after our film premiered in Tulsa, who found it on YouTube and have said, hey, I'm not religious, but I truly was touched or this has changed me or I'm going to pivot in this way. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to do something courageous or deal with an issue Mm. that I have been ignoring. And that is more powerful than anything. So even though now that we have learned that the industry is might be more willing to fund um, a project that might, you know, might also be very enjoyable in that moment. But I think faith-based content it's so wonderful because it lingers, the blessing lingers, the lessons, like it, it can truly change people's lives when we're able to share such personal things about ourselves. And I don't know what's more personal than, than what we believe in. Any thought? Yeah. Okay. Um, and thank you for that. And um, in terms of just fundraising, you all were blessed and fortunate to have a 401k. Um, But what are your thoughts about crowdfunding or um, using the traditional routes of trying to get investors involved in a film project? Yes, I wish I was better with money. And it's so nice because now that we have a project that we have made, we can show like, hey, this is our production value. And really before this, it was showing production value, not in a 102 minute film, but it was in a three minutes storytelling, like, hey, this is what I'm capable of. Imagine this at a bigger level. So uh, that's, I think the next thing that we need to learn about is because we want to do our next film, which I'm just, I'm just putting it out there as much as I can, because I want it to come to fruition. And that is another pilgrimage through Italy, following in the footsteps of St. Francis of Assisi and following his steps when he was called um, by the Pope to walk from Assisi to Rome. We'd like to do it in reverse and start in Rome and walk to Assisi and then beyond to, to follow in those, in those ancient footsteps. So now we are going to have to force ourselves to figure out um, how to fund it. This, the first project we did, it was a divine calling. There were so many signs um, that we wrote about in a book that just got published on Amazon. So we, we knew we had to do it and we knew that that we would be provided for because so many little nudges kept happening to say, you're going in the right direction. But now where we are in this moment is, are we supposed to keep telling faith-based stories? And if so, we can't keep figuring out like, like there's no more money in our pockets to put it in on our own being. So now we need to figure out the crowdfunding because so many people have told us this content has worth and it changed my life. And now it's having the courage to ask for people. 
will you fund us? Will, will you put forth um, some dollars to prove to us that it is worth it? So we have a lot to learn. So thank you for pointing that out because we are, we are not experts yet, but that's what we're going to have to, that's what our 2022 is going to be all about. I think I, my final question for you is the filmmaking experience is also entrepreneurial um, mm -hmm. in terms of having to market, having to plan, having to strategically forecast for the future. Yeah. What can our lessons learned um, that you would like to share with individuals on the filmmakers entrepreneurial journey? Yeah. For me, one day at a time. If if I went into this project thinking I'm going to make a 102 minute film and it's going to be this good and it's going to have all these miraculous moments that naturally occurred, I would have completely freaked out and I wouldn't have tried. I would have never had the courage to do it. But everything was just one action a day, one action at a time. Like this morning's action was we published our book on Kindle on Amazon. And then we could not figure out how to make it a paper paperback on Amazon. And so this morning's task was, we just have to figure out that one thing. We don't have to figure out if anyone is ever going to buy it or if it's ever going to be helpful, which we have heard it is. So it's just not to get overwhelmed and not to look at the far distant goal, but just look at the immediate task in front of you so you don't lose courage to do it. Because after seeing this film done and being in, in a movie theater filled with people and they react to it and they laughed when we laughed and they cried when we cried is the most special experience. And we would have never thought that that would have happened while we were shooting. We just shot and we just did our very best. So it's just we hope to encourage any project, any any tiny thought in, in the mind that has been divinely dropped in there that says, hey, you should do this. Use your creativity to create this. Just keep going toward that direction. And for us, the help has come when we needed it. And it was just, in our opinion, God working through people to help us in each little stage, the post-production, figuring out how to create and write credits. There's been such an incredible learning curve in the last few years creating this project. But as soon as we had the question, the answers came and the people came to help us. Yeah, one step at a time, just don't give up. Incredible. Well, give us the name of the book. Don't be shy about it. Oh, thank and, you. And how, do, and how do we get in contact with you? How do we stay in contact with you thank for you. your upcoming project? Thank you. The book is called My Journey Back to God because I... I was never removed from God. I just got a little distracted for the first 30 years of my life. So my journey back to God, and my name is Kristen Dickerson. So you can, if you type those things into Amazon, it should pop up. Uh, the Kindle version is available now. And Lord willing, in a few days, a paperback version will also be available if we keep moving forward. Um, most of us, or most of us, the two of us can really be found on social media uh, through me. My pages are Kristen Dickerson TV, so K-R-I-S-T-I-N Dickerson TV. And our production company is Spirit and Nature Productions. And our website is spiritandnatureproductions.com. Is that everything? I think so. Peter is the quiet one of the relationship. You might have noticed that. <laughs> Still waters run deep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so you have been a joy um, for us to just get behind the scenes with your wonderful project. We wish you blessings and healing and light. And we look forward to all that's ahead of you. And be well. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Okay. Take care.